So there's a way to deal with this error, and it's PCR. PCR, it's a uh, polymerase chain reaction. You don't need to learn that uh, word, but PCR is how everybody refers to. This allows us to increase the signal intensity of the dots exponentially. Um, so how does that work? Initially, you have uh, a template of DNA, which you can separate into two templates, uh, then add these smaller fragments of DNA, which we talked before called primers, and then polymerases, again, will start copying the original DNA in each one of these directions. So after one cycle of this, you will end up going from one single strand of DNA to two. Now, if you repeat this cycle, you end up with four, and if you repeat, it's eight, and it simply increases exponentially. And so the amount of templates that you're going to have for reading your image at the end, it's going to be a lot increased. <laughs> Sorry, why does it that do that? <laughs> the, <coughs> there's another problem here, and um, as you may have noticed, these DNA fragments that you're adding in order to amplify the signal have to be complementary to the sequence that you are trying to amplify. So this DNA is coming from the cell and the point of sequencing is that you don't know how that DNA looks like. So one way to deal with this uh, is to add adapters. So you can have your unknown piece of DNA coming from the cell and then you can add a specific piece of DNA, a shorter one, on both ends that you created that you know very well what it's made of. And there's very smart ways to use these adapters uh, that biochemists and biologists come up with. But in general, the idea is he here. You have at the beginning of your sequence some known fragment, then the unknown part that you want to sequence, that you want to learn from the DNA of your cells, and then at the end you have another known fragment of DNA. Um, these known fragments, you can use them for amplifying, but you can use them also for attaching them, these DNA segments to some particular surface, or you can use them for barcoding, and this process of adding the adapters to the original DNA is what people will call library preparation. Um, so, if we have these fragments of DNA attached to a surface and we want to amplify them, the PCR, the PCR in this case has to happen on the surface. So the way this happens is you have the original DNA with your adapters. Um, you put them together, you let them uh, attach to the surface, and then PCR can happen uh, in a bridge. This means that um, the two ends of your piece of DNA are going to attach to the surface, and then you can start replicating those fragments of DNA until you have enough of them to have a very solid signal for the sequencer to read. Um, and as you may imagine, if the first type of error that we talked about earlier, that is placing a different nucleotide than the one they should have placed, happens early in this process, then you're going to have different versions of the strand at the end of this process, and that will also reduce the quality of the, of the reads. Yeah, so in, this, in these clusters, then the signal gets amplified and it's easier for the machine to read uh, the pictures that are taken during sequencing. So other, other, other terminology to be thinking about here is fragment size and read length. We have adapters and then we have our piece of DNA that some people call fragment, some people call insert. This is the piece of DNA that we don't know and that we're trying to learn about. Um, 
you add the primer, you perform the sequencing, and then you read a little bit of this DNA. This fragment of DNA can be much larger than the read that, you're try that you are getting at the end of the process. So, um, once the first, once you have read on this direction the DNA, you can go one step uh, the, to the next step, which is inverting the sequence to the other direction and then putting a new primer in the other end of the DNA segment and then sequencing that again. And what you will end up at the end is knowing this end of the DNA and this end of the DNA, which are both here, and then having probably one space in between that you are not knowing. So this in total is usually 500 um, nucleotides and the reads are 100 nucleotides in length. Um, often, but not always. And there's ways to, to increase those sizes. Question. Then why are the reads usually that length? So the quality decreases fast um, as you um, advance through a process of sequencing. So each one of these nucleotides, pictures that are taken, has lower and lower quality. And if you go too far, then the quality goes really low. Um, yeah, and so because each one of these steps includes washing and adding polymerases and all of that, it gets very expensive. And if your quality of the sequencing is not really good, then you're paying more for less quality of the reads. OK, so let's stop for a moment. Have a small recap. Uh, there's two main parts of that we've talked about until now. One is library preparation. Uh, I didn't go specifically into these three steps, but they are key to the process. First is extraction of DNA from the cells. Um, and there's different ways to do that. Some of them are better for the process. Then there's fragmentation. So DNA comes in these very large molecules, which have to be um, broken in smaller sizes. Then there's a size selection, because we're interested in only having sizes around 500 um, nucleotides. Although there's different protocols that might change this. Then adapter ligation, then attaching to a plate and doing the bridge PCR to in increase the um, intensity of the signal. And then the sequencing part can take place, which is elongation, one nucleotide at a time. You add the fluorescence and take a picture, and then you repeat for another nucleotide and repeat for another nucleotide. Then in the case that you're doing pair end sequencing, you are going to have this process on one side of the DNA and then on the other side of the DNA and those are going to come out as two separate reads on the same location. 